Hello there, and welcome back. In the previous episode, we finally started sending the location of the device to the database and then showing the location on the Google map. In this episode, we're going to start working on our first fragment because, as I told you, we want to have some kind of login page inside our first fragment. So if for any reason the target opens our app, he will simply see some kind of login page, but we are going to have an option to enter a password and go to the maps, okay? So we're going to take care of this part in this video. We're going to handle different styling aspects of our app. So we're going to start by removing a few things that we no longer need. For example, if we go to our Second fragment, we have this Sydney marker that we created in the very first episodes. So we don't need it anymore because we don't want to show this fake location on our map. And we can also delete these coordinates. Then we also can remove this because we don't need to move the camera anywhere. We do want to leave this map reference and we do want to leave this call to the database. But of course we can pass this Google map straight away and we don't need this middleman, okay? Next, we can also go to our layout, main activity XML, and over here, we're going to remove this fab button that appears on top of our views, okay? So we're going to delete this, and we can also delete the code itself inside the main activity. I think we already deleted it in the first episode. Now there's another thing in the first fragment. We want to remove these toasts, okay? Because it's good for us to know if we got the permission, but if the user, if the target actually opens our app, we don't want to show these toasts. So let's just remove it and let's make it a println for testing. Okay, so there's a small change in our code that we want to do before we start working on the design of our login page. So inside our main activity, we had this part that we checked if our service is running. And if it's not running, we started a new service. Okay, and this was basically an extension. Now, it's going to work each time we're going to start a new service. We're going to save a Boolean and say that the service has started. And if the service is destroyed, then we're going to change it to false. But that's not a very reliable way to check if our service is working. So I'm going to provide you another way. And you can test both of these ways and see what works better for you. Okay. I really think that this new way is going to be more precise. Okay. So back inside our main activity, we're going to create a method. And it's going to be a private. Fun is my service running. And it's going to return a Boolean because we want to know if the service is running or not. Okay. And inside, we're going to access a component that goes and checks all the running services inside our app. So instead of saving some kind of Boolean and telling it, okay, I just started a new service. So know that I started a new service. So don't start a new service next time. Here we can actually check if this service is already running in the background. Now, the reason I did not use it in the beginning is because this way is deprecated. And it means that it's no longer supported in an official way. And it means that soon maybe it will no longer work, but for now it will work, okay? And if at some point in the future it will stop working, then just leave this first way that we did, okay? So inside we're going to create a variable that will store a manager, get system service, 
activity service, activity manager. So we go to the activity manager and then we loop over all the services that are running at the moment, okay? So if we have multiple services on different apps, all of these services will be shown in this place. So service in manager, and you can see that there is this line on this method because it means that it is no longer supported and it's deprecated, okay? But we can still use it, obviously. So int max value, So here we check if the service that we passed in is equals to the name of one of the services that are running, it means that the service is already running, so there is no need to run it again, okay? And this service class is the service class that we're going to pass in, and we're going to use this wildcard, it means that we can pass in anything we want. So when we're going to call this method, we're also going to pass in our location class, and then it will check if the name of our location class is equals to one of the services that are running at the moment, it means that we don't need to run the service because it already runs in the background, okay? So if it is running, we will return true, and if it's not running, it will return false, okay? So it will go over all the services that are running at the moment, and if it's going to find our service, it means that it is running. And then we can know that we don't need to start a new service. So over here, we're going to take this method, and instead of this extension, we're going to say, if is my service running, is false, right? Because we use this exclamation mark, so it means we can also make it easier like that. False, right? And we need to pass in our location service. Yeah, it wants us to use it this way, but it's the same thing, okay? So if this location service is not running at the moment, we're going to start it. And if it's going to return true, it means that it is running, then we're not going to start it. And this will happen each time we open our app, right? Because if we open our app after we close the app, the service still needs to be running in the background because our service will also run if the app is closed. So if for any reason we open the app once again, it should still run in the background. And here we simply don't want to start the service again, so we check if it's already running. So this is a better way because it actually checks in real time if this service is running. But as you can see, this method is deprecated and the reason it's deprecated is because it's not very secure because the people in Android think that other people can take advantage of this method and they can do all kinds of uh, bad things. Well, exactly like we are trying to do, right? We're using this method to do bad things. Again, it's just for educational purposes, but we are the example why this method is deprecated because we can actually use it to check if the service is running and then we can keep starting it again, okay? So if you don't want to use the old way, you can simply go back into the shared pref and you can delete these two extensions. For now, I'm simply going to comment them out because maybe later we're going to use them again if we find any problems. Next, I want to show you another thing we need to take care of. And from now on, I'm not going to run the app on the emulator because in the previous episode, it caused us a lot of problems. So I'm going to run it on my physical device and I'm using a third party app to actually show the content of the app on the screen, okay? And if you want, I'm going to put a link in the description to find this app. With this application, you can simply run your actual physical device and see it inside your computer, okay? So let's start the app. 
And of course we need to remove these because we're not using the extensions anymore. Let's run it again. What now? Let's see, where are we using it? Inside the main activity maybe. Yes, we have these imports that we don't need. Let's run again. Okay, so let's make it smaller. So this is my device. And it asks us to use the location. Okay, so I'm going to say yes, I want to use the location. And then it started the service. And we're going to go to maps. And I'm not going to show you my exact location, just out of privacy for me and my family. But this is my location of my house. And if we wait, we can see that each time there is an update, a new marker is added. And it's not because I'm really moving. I'm actually just sitting down. But even though Google Maps is very accurate, right? You can see my street and this is my house. So it's very accurate. But even if I'm not moving, it still thinks that I moved an inch, right? Or a few centimeters. So each time it thinks that I moved, so it shows a different marker. Now, if you don't mind, and if I'm going to start walking, it will actually show some kind of pattern, right? So if you want this kind of behavior inside the app, you can leave it as it is, right? But if you don't want to get confused and you just want to see one marker each time, right? You want to see the latest marker, then we're going to do this change, okay? Inside our Firebase Manager, when we get all of the different devices from the database, before we loop over all the devices, we're simply going to say map clear, okay? So before we get all of the devices, we're simply clearing all the markers from the map, okay? So each update, it will show the new markers, but it will delete the old markers. So if we're going to do that and run the app again, we can see that each update, it simply shows the marker in the next location and it's not just adding more and more markers, okay? So these are the two ways you can use it. So now we're going to start with the login page, okay? Because the part with the map is working and we want to be able to actually install this app on a device. So before we can do that, and if we want to keep our secret safe, then we need to create this first activity to look like a login page. You can create any kind of login page that you wish. You can create any app that you want, okay? Maybe you want something specific for a specific target but we are going to create a Facebook login page, okay? And it's not going to look very accurate, right? If you're very familiar with the login page, but I'm going to do my best to make it look very similar, okay? So of course, I'm going to provide you all of this XML file with the code to make this Facebook login page, and you don't need to really type it from scratch, but I'm going to type it over here and you can watch along to see how it looks. You're going to find the link in the description of this video, okay? And also notice that we're going to create a few more layouts and XML files. We're going to change a few values over here and all of this is required for this login page, okay? So if you just paste your login page over here, some things will be missing and these things are colors and other layouts, okay? So just notice and I'm going to tell you everything after I'm done.
Okay, so I think that this is all. Um, if some of these are red for you, it's just because I added a few other drawables, so you need to create them as well. Okay, so here under the drawable, I simply created new drawable resource file and I named them edit text custom bottom, edit text custom top, and logging button custom. Okay, so inside this edit text bottom, we created a shape and a solid color of white, and the corners are left radius bottom seven. So the radius of the corner at the bottom will be seven and the right corner is also seven. Okay, then we did the exact opposite over here. We simply changed it to top left radius and top right radius to seven. Then we have this login button and we have this transparent gray color. Okay, and we have all of our corners at seven. Okay, so these are the drawables. And now when you're going to create them, they're going to be added over here. Next, we created this fonts folder. So you click on res, new Android resource directory, and over here simply select font, okay? And inside, you're going to drag these two fonts, and I'm going to add them in the description of the video. And of course, inside the colors, we created this Facebook blue color, okay? So this is the value. And then when all of these will be added, then everything over here should look exactly the same. So now we have these guidelines, so it doesn't look very well, but when we run the app, we're going to see the slugin page. And as I told you, it doesn't look exactly the same, but if someone is not very sharp, they're going to probably not see the difference. And even if they do, they will simply remove the app. The important part is that they won't be able to just click on some kind of button and go to the maps. This is what they will see. This is the entire app for them, okay? We are going to be able to enter a password, click on login, and it will take us to the maps fragment, okay? But they won't have the option to move to the maps fragment. Now we're going to do a few more changes. Over here inside the themes, we're going to delete this night one because we don't need two of them. And inside here, we're going to do a few changes. First of all, we're going to change the color of the status bar, okay? And the status bar, we can run the app from the emulator because we're not trying to test the locations. Let's run the app. Yeah, there's a few problems because we did not take care of the other things. Let's see what's wrong. Yes, we have this, we removed the old button so we can comment this out and now we can run. So you can see the color over here is this purple, right? Is this purple that comes with our app. So if we want to remove this or simply change the color, we can change the value over here but we can also change the color of this status bar. So the way we do it over here, we're simply going to change the color and we're going to use this Facebook blue, okay? So now this part will be blue like this part. And we also want to change this bottom navigation bar to be blue as well. So we're going to add item navigate na navigation bar color and we're going to set it to blue as well okay so now also this bottom one will be blue now we also want to remove this toolbar right because there is no need for this toolbar and we want it to look good so we're going to go to our activity main and over here we're simply going to select this entire app bar layout and we're going to comment it out and you can also delete it because we don't really need it. Okay, so it will remove this bar over here. Now, another thing is that when we type in a number or a text 
and we select this text, you see this green color and these markers are not looking good. Okay, so we're going to change this color as well. So to do that, we go back into our themes and over here, we just are going to change the colors of these colors secondary. Okay, so we're going to change it to Facebook blue and we can also change this one to black, let's say. So now if we run the app, you see that it looks much better. There is no other colors over here. It takes this entire screen. And also if we type in some text and we select it, it has this blue color. So things look a bit better and the target will maybe buy this whole fake Facebook login, okay? Now we created this button and two of these links. Now these links will not work, obviously, but we want to make them clickable. Maybe we're going to be able to fool the target a bit longer. And of course this button will be clickable. Now what we want to do is if the target tries to click these things, we're simply going to show some kind of error, okay? So again, he will get mad and he will just delete this app. This is what we want. We want him to delete our app if he exposed it and there's nothing we can do. Also, if he's going to try to log in and put his email and password, and then he's going to press on this login, we also want to display this message, okay? There's an error, maybe you check something, maybe check your internet connection, right? So he won't be able to actually log in because it's not Facebook. And he's going to get frustrated and just delete the app or maybe just close the app, okay? So to do that, we will go to our first fragment and let's just skip this. And then we're going to add binding, sign up button, okay? This sign up button is this sign up button. No, it's actually this sign up for Facebook. Set on click listener. And then we're going to do the same with this need help, okay? So we have this need help button. And the reason we see it over here is because we gave it an ID over here. We have this ID and we have this ID. So that's why it can reference them with the binding, okay? So what we're going to do here is simply show an error. And this will be a method that we're going to create. And this method will simply show us some kind of alert dialog. And I'm not going to write this code. I'm tired from before. So I'm simply going to paste this. So fun show error. And it will simply create a dialog. And let's remove this. It will create this dialog and we need to import it. And import this. It will create a dialog. It will set this message, okay? Something went wrong, please check your internet connection. Then we're going to have this button so you can click on okay and it will dismiss this dialog. And we also create the alert and we show the alert and you're going to see how it looks. So when we call this method, it will simply show us this alert, okay? And we can make it private, of course. Now, when we click on one of these links, it will show this error message. Now, we also want to show this error message if the target will try to input some kind of credentials, right? So we're going to create another on-click listener, but this time it will be of this login button. So login button, set on-click listener, but inside we're going to do an if statement. If binding password input text to string. So we basically get the value that is inside of this 
edit text. So if the value that is inside is equals to some kind of password that we're going to create, let's say coffee, only then move to the maps fragment. Okay, so this is what we did before with the button we had to move to the maps fragment. So we don't need this anymore. So only if the password is coffee, then move to the maps fragment. Else, so anything else, we're going to show this error again. So you can change this to something else, something more secure. The point is that the target will not know the password. And we're also just ignoring the email, okay? We don't care about the email. We care that this password will be our own password, okay? So we decided coffee, and when we're going to type in coffee, it's going to take us to the maps. But the target won't be able to go to the maps because he will not know our password. So now we can run the app again. And we can see this login page. Now, if the target accidentally finds our app, right? In the episode that I'm going to show you how to actually build this app into an APK and how to install it on the target's phone and how to change the icon and the name of the app. I'm also going to show you that we're going to try to hide this app, right? We're going to try to find some kind of folder somewhere the user will not find this app. But if he finds this app, we don't want him to be able to go to our maps fragment. So he will try to click on this and it will show him some kind of error. He will try to click on this, it will show him this error. If he's going to actually fill in his credentials and press on login, it will show him this error. Only if we're going to pass in coffee, and it doesn't matter what the email is, we can also delete this and we log in, it will take us to our maps and here we're going to see all the locations of the different devices. And then of course we can also go back and it will bring us here. Just make sure you're deleting this after you're done, okay? So this is the way this app is going to work. This is basically 90% of everything we wanted to do. We still have dependency injection to add to our app, but it's something that will make our code more efficient. And it's something that is important if you're interested in Android development. If you just want this app to be functional, then this is it, okay? So in the next episode, we're going to add dependency injection. We're going to reorganize everything so it will be, so it will follow the MVVM design pattern. But if all of these things are not important to you, then you can just skip the next episode and you can wait for the episode that will come after that. And in that episode, we're going to build our app into an APK. And an APK is just the file that you can actually copy to the device of your target, click on it, and it will install this app, okay? So I'm going to show you how we do this. I'm going to show you how we change the icon of our app so it will look like a Facebook icon and the name of the app and the different ways you can actually install this app on the target's device. So all of that will be not in the next episode, but in the episode after that. In the next episode, we're going to take care of dependency injection and other things that are useful to you if you really want to learn Android and you want to learn how you really build apps and you make your code more efficient. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed. Please leave a like and I'll see you next time.